In India, a run on the rupee. The government has scrapped the 1,000 and the 500 rupee notes. Banks and ATMs were flooded by those trying to withdraw other denominations. The bank notes, now declared illegal, account for 85% of the cash in circulation. The goal to tackle corruption and new high security notes are being issued. New Delhi just announced the old notes will be accepted for another 72 hours for household bills and basic fees. Let's bring in Ankur Patel. He is the co-founder and chief investment officer at R Squared Macro. Um, let's start there. This is just pretty remarkable. It's creating a lot of chaos, leaving some people holding the bag, so to speak. I mean, suddenly money you had yesterday is worthless overnight. What's the reasoning behind this? Well, it really is a pillar of Narendra Modi, uh, the Indian prime minister's agenda uh, to uh, really tackle uh, corruption, uh, tax evasion, and money laundering. And um, it is, as you mentioned, it's very abrupt, very dramatic, but it had to be that way because had Narendra Modi announced it in a month in advance, uh, it wouldn't have achieved its purpose. Wasn't there a smoother way to get this same result? And do you think it might hurt Modi's standing? I mean, there's a lot of uh, common folks who are going to be hurt by this, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it does hurt Modi's uh, popularity. Um, it does uh, kind of erode support for his party over the next couple of months. But I think at the end of the day, despite the short-term pain that uh, I think a lot of local Indians and even Indians around the world that have uh, rupees uh, in, 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 in their possession, I mean, they certainly will be hurt. But in the long term, it is very good for the Indian economy. It will allow more of the money to be part of the traditional banking system. It will actually support India's fiscal health in the long term. So this is going to be very long-term positive for, for India. Uh, but the Bombay Stock Exchange crashed. Uh, what about the overall initial hit on the economy? What do you think about that? I think, I think it's about right. I, th I think you know, what happens is that uh, as Indians scramble to get rid of the rupee notes that they have in possession, it's going to hurt consumption. Uh, they're going to buy fewer goods. Uh, you know, if you look at India, about uh, 80 to 85 percent of the transactions that occur are actually done in cash. Now, that's very, very different than an advanced economy like the U.S. or the United Kingdom, where about 25 percent of the transactions are done in cash. So given that so much of the transactions is still very much cash-based, it's going to hit demand, which means it's bad for, for Indian equities, which is why the Sensex is getting hit as hardly as, as, as it has. You know, you make this point. I mean, if, if I'm in India and I'm going to go purchase something, it's cash transactions. It's, this is, happens on a daily basis, probably throughout the day if you're, if you're doing business. So talk to me about small business. How are they going to be affected? Well, for them, you know, it, it is such, it's such a large hit for them. Uh, most of their, their business is done in cash, and it's going to force, in the short term, it's going to force them to move to the traditional banking system. So they'll either have to take credit, which a lot of Indians don't have access to, or they'll have to wait until the new Indian rupee notes, you know, the 500 uh, rupee note that will come out in the 2000 rupee note, both with, with much more advanced security features. They'll have to wait for those security notes to come out before they see business as usual. You mentioned uh, it's a shock to the system. It had to be done this way uh, in an attempt to curb corruption, counterfeiting, and, and, and funding terrorists. Give me a sense of just how bad that problem is. So about 30% of India's GDP, uh, potentially maybe more, is part of the vast informal shadow economy. Um, and it's not just illicit activities, it's not all money laundering, um, but it is uh, money that the Indian government cannot tax because they just cannot track it. Uh, so you have all this lost tax revenue for a government that is in very much uh, of, of need of tax dollars. Uh, so uh, you know, there are a couple of problems at hand, but, but what the biggest uh, problem right now that exists is that the uh, Indian economy is very much a black market shadow economy, and more of it needs to be part of a traditional transparent banking system. And that's the major objective that Modi has. So how much of a hit does the black market take? I mean, does this shut it down? Does it injure it, uh, wound it? Uh, do they figure workarounds? I mean, what's your sense? It, this certainly cannot solve the entire black market problem, but in our uh, view, and, and I think a view of a lot of analysts around the world, is that this is a very bold, a very transformational move. Uh, it's one of the strongest moves that we've seen in any emerging economy, uh, really ever. So, um, from our perspective, this is the first of, of a series of moves that potentially could could erode uh, the shadow economy that India has. Uh, we think it's a great move. It's um, from an economic perspective, is a short-term hit for a, a very substantial long-term gain.
and short-term hit for Modi, but uh, you think he rebounds from it? We do, uh, yes, we do believe that, and it, it will be a little bit of a communication challenge, uh, but he's been a very popular prime minister. Uh, he's done a lot for the Indian economy over the last two years, um, and, you know, he's waited this long to announce this measure. So uh, from, our, from our perspective, uh, it, the timing is, is, is right. The Indian economy is on much solid, it's on pretty solid footing, um, and this is the right time to make such a move. All right. Ankur Patel joining us from Alabama. Thanks so much.